when somebody else is destroyed. Yeah, so that effectively means that um, Tom's ships, uh, five of them, have um, crack shot with Sears ability. Right. So let's talk about the other oddity in this list. We have this Bactoid prototype hiding the class bomber with a strange loadout. Yeah. So the Bactoid prototype, um, that's the uh, the droid bomber that uh, has the double missile slot. Now, the standard droid bomber doesn't have double missiles. It has uh, right. a torpedo, one missile, one bomb slot. The Bactoid prototype is purely designed for carrying two missile slots. And or the Diamond Boron missiles. Absolutely, because the Diamond Boron take two, take up two missile slots. So this is the only thing currently in the, uh, in the Separatists that can carry these missiles. Passive sensors means that even just doing a one forwards and then activating that passive sensors, um, once that ship engages, Tom will be able to take a target lock on uh, whatever's in range. What that allows him to do is then spend the calculate from these guys, spend the calculate from these guys, to uh, effectively have a double modded shot with the uh, target lock and the, uh, the calculate. And landing struts again, grappling struts, grappling struts. He can park those on a rock if he wants. Exactly. So let's, you know, just real quick, since we rarely see diamond boron missiles, essentially it, uh, it, it impacts his target, three die missile attack, and then you can spend another charge to splash damage. That yep. splash damage then against every ship with an agility equal to or lower ship, or equal to or lower than the ship that it hit. Yep. They all roll one die, including the ship that it hit, take any hits or crits rolled. Yeah, absolutely. So it's 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 not a missile that we see very often. Obviously, the the more common one is the concussion missiles. Right. And it's largely because of that that two missile slot requirement. There are very few ships that can actually take it in the game. Um, and and concussion missiles is seen as sometimes the the, the better choice as well. Diamond Boron is great for against the anti swarm though, because if Tom manages to get that off against uh, one of gold. the uh, against one of the gold squadron troopers, then everything that's at range zero to one. In and the zero to one part is important because it includes the ship that you've hit. Rolls an attack dice and on a hit or a crit takes an extra damage. So it's just a splash damage effect. And those one and two damage uh, just will chip away and chip away. Right. Now, the other thing that Tom is doing that's very interesting here is no straight deployment. We've got some off angles here. We have some off angles here from those two Bell Belives that just shot yep. five straight down the bottom of the board. And then no off, excuse, uh, especially nothing from Captain Sear that we would consider straight. Yep. He's pointing down towards the top of that 22 and a half degree. Two straights from the droid group in the center with the hyena bomber following behind or the hollowing. Hyena bomber yep. in the top of the formation. Yep, and and the the, the highest pilot skill on uh, on Tom's side is Captain Seer, uh, pilot right. skill two. That means that his entire list is going to move before Sarah touches a ship. Right, and that's something that Sarah can use to her advantage with Obi Wan to dodge all those arcs. Obi Wan too is going to want to separate from that force, so he is not affected by those diamond boron missiles. I wonder if Sarah plays differently because of the diamond boron missiles, or just sticks to her gun, sticks to what that list does best at, which is putting weight of fire into single targets. Well, when I was talking to both players before the game, they were talking about um, how bo diamond boron works and things like that, and Sarah commented that she's got a lot of hull. Right. She's She's not gonna. Um, she knows that the uh, the power of this list is staying together in one big block and supporting each other with those overlapping arcs. She's not gonna be worried about taking one or two damage. Right. I think you're absolutely. I think you're absolutely correct there. That diamond boron missiles is excellent in the mirror match, right? Where you've got a droid swarm, no hull, or excuse yep. me, no shields, all the same agility, clustered in this tight formation. Diamond boron missiles impacts that hard, tosses crits around to everybody. Then you have spread out damage over a large area. You can even, if you're out at range, you might be able to chain that two turns in a row. Yep. That's a beautiful shot against the mirror match, against that droid swarm that we see so often. I'm not sure it will be especially effective against Sarah's, but it is that kill shot. It's an extra three die attack. And we do just have three shots in the can, right? Three charges on there. So if, uh, if Tom wants to, he doesn't have to pop that second charge. Absolutely not. He can just use it as a three dice attack. Right. Um, to deny the uh, the additional um, defense die, but also worth noting, Bactoids do have the reload option. Right, so he can pull more charges on that. The Bactoids are very, very interesting little bomber right there. Yeah, um, and the other, the important thing about the Bactoid as well is it also has the sensor upgrade that allows him to take the passive sensors, and there is a, a, an often not used ability uh, because it does uh, mean that you're using um, you're not having the modification. The Bactoid can actually fire at ships. Um, that other ships have got target locked, ignoring the restriction on the Diamond Boron. So you right. can actually, if these ships and these ships pick different things to target lock, 
it means that that uh, Bactoid prototype can fire at whatever ship he wants. He just right. will not have the, uh, the modification. So it is worth mentioning that that, that restriction or that the Bactoid is, is only on ships with the network calculations ability. So only off of those with the target lock. Right. So only these two droids. The Outlaws, uh, the Belbelabs cannot use that, but it's still two more locks that can go down, two more ships, and that's two more out of the five. So three out of five Asira's ships can be locked, can be vulnerable to those Diamond Boron missiles. Great clarification there, Acer. So we see things moving along here. 67 minutes left in this round. Both players angling for that first engagement. Sarah moving across the top of the board. We see Obi-Wan Kenobi hiding right there behind the timer, going up across the top, uh, doing the classic case thing, separating from the pack, yep. preparing to come down this lane, I believe, as a flanker. Yep. Now, I think we're going to see Sia wants to try and rejoin these ships here. Right. Uh, I think Tom might have put him out there just as a little bit of bait, see what happens. Uh, but Sia's ability is only uh, out to range three, which means that he's got to get back to these guys if he wants to, uh, to use it. And that's also the same for TA-175. Now do we s think we see this group moving up, th moving back down through this lane and into this area? Or are they going to one turn in? I think that bomber's going to stay on that rock. Going to land right there. That's a really good thought. And just be a little turret. And I think that's why he's gone for the, uh, the funny angles there, because... Um, this ship has a one bank. It is red. Right. Now, he might be able to. It, it, because of this angle, it's really throwing me off. But a, uh, a, a, <laughs> that might be a tactic. I mean, let's be honest. Quite a lot of us players are quite weird, and we do like right. things at uh, <laughs> square <laughs> angles. <laughs> so, I would expect that this ship here is going to land on that rock there and just sit there as a little turret. Right. He's going to be orbited by Seer, by those Bebb Labs, and by the other droids. Too straight. I think that gets him on the rock. I think it does as well. And there it is, landing on the rock, opening those landing struts. And passive sensors. Now, landing struts and grappling, grappling struts are the same. Yep. Landing struts just only for the hyena class droid bomber. <laughs> and then he takes that passive sensor upgrade, allowing him to calculate or lock at the end of the uh, at the end of that round. Let's see, does this land on the rock as well? So Sarah just clarifying there that. Um, when the uh, when the landing struts actually open and close, so she uh, she was just clarifying whether it was similar to S foils when you do it before you reveal, or whether it's when you actually land on the rock. Right. So there's a one hard turn from number pink right there. Yeah. Just taking the calculate, facing the arc up towards the top. Bubble Lab Starfighters following from the bottom of the board. Three banks. He's wheeling that formation in, creating a zone of danger all throughout this asteroid field. Are you saying there's a danger zone? I am indeed. And is this the highway to it? I think it is. But for Sarah Tessum, this might be the highway to the danger zone. We'll see where she goes in. There's a boost from the Bell Lab. Will we see the linked focus? Uh, link calculate for these because they don't That's have That's right. These are on autopilot. <laughs> it's difficult because the uh, the two bank in this way uh, is uh, is tricky. Um, it really limit the the bell -bell up really does trouble uh, does have trouble clearing that stress. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's I'm not sure it's too bad, but he is going to be he's going to be leaving it. Yeah. He's going to be not linking that calculate. Another three bank from Feature and Outlaw Orange. I think we're seeing the one straight boost. I think so, too. I'm not sure that Sarah's going to engage this round. Mm. It's important to note that, uh, actually, when I spoke earlier about saying CE needs to come back in to get TA-175, he actually doesn't, because TA-175 is right here. Right. Now, that's unusual that normally you would put um, TA-175 onto Captain Sia, but that is in lists where you only see the uh, the, the one Bellabob. Um, in this, obviously, 
Um, Tom's doing something right with these. Right, he, he absolutely is. is. And the other thing that he's doing is he's spreading out the utility of those ships. Yeah. Your tactical relay is on a different ship, so if you kill Captain Seer, you don't get the one-two punch of killing yeah. the relay, killing Captain Seer. Absolutely, it's a really interesting choice, and, and it, it's some really outside-the-box thinking that we sometimes right. see at these uh, events. It's just like Tom's list is just an interesting twist on that droid swarm, right? Yep. Something that we always like to see. Here comes Sarah. She is banking in with that Gold Squadron Trooper to bank. Taking the barrel roll. Will we link it? I don't think so right now. Doesn't look like she's linking. No, I don't think you really gain much from linking this. She knows that she's not going to get shot at. She right. knows that um, she's not going to get shots off. So so the arc there, coming around with the, uh, with the three bank. So that is getting awfully close. I'm not, I don't believe that there will be shots between yellow and the arc, but it's a close run thing. I think there might be a uh, shot here, but I think Sarah might barrel all away. She picked up a template she is considering. She's she barrel rolling down. She, she what? She chooses what? She's going to choose violence. She is going to choose violence. That's red barrel roll on the 104th Battalion pilot, but if she can pop off an early damage on the Bactoid prototype or that Feethan Outlaw, excuse me, Feethan Atra, not an outlaw. <laughs> That's why I just call them autopilot drones. <laughs> yeah, on that autopilot drone. Then maybe she can come out with an early lead. So she's now just looking at what her options are for that barrel roll with a medium base because she's got to be careful of this rock here. Uh, and she also wants to make sure that uh, this guy doesn't pick up a target lock. Uh, Two bank from gold pink. Going to bump into the back of the gold squadron trooper that she's just placed right in front of him. And there's the bump. Hopefully that choice of violence doesn't cost her positioning later on. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to see a three bank from the Y-Wing. There we go. Broadside's broadside there pointed down towards the center of the board. Out the pilot left-hand side. There's Obi-Wan also with the three bank. Yeah, I mean, broadside's uh, an interesting choice. Um, it, very, very new to the game, um, just like the uh, the Nantex. Right. We've seen a lot of late. Uh, the a new lot wave. of broadside. I mean, uh, let's let's not forget this wave's been out for just over a month, and uh, we're seeing a lot of it in uh, uh, here at Worlds uh, this year. So uh, players obviously appreciate it and like it. Um, Absolutely. Whether they're kind of counting on uh, it shaking up the meta and it's something new, something unknown. Uh, we'll I think see. some of that's com comboed with the points change that brought some of the Jedi down as well. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, I mean, the, uh, the the latest point change has been in place for a while. Right. The Y-Wing coming out, uh, the Nantex, and uh, we, we've got the Nantex on one of the other tables right now by the legend that is Paul Heaver, who right. is, I, I am sad to say, a better Nantex player than I am. Six Sorry about that, buddy. that, But I'm a big man. You are a big man. All right, 59 minutes left. Obi-Wan used Force Link's controls to boost out there. We have a 104th Squadron pilot firing into the Hyena. Range three. So worth mentioning right there, that passive sensor charge had been triggered. So we don't have, or so we uh, so she have is, a missed trigger. Uh, nope, she is firing into uh, TA 175. Here we go, first shots, two hits, one focus. TA-175 going to take shields. both shields. I, I think that's a key Attention piece uh, to, uh, of Tom's that Sarah's going for right, right now. Great early damage, the Outlaws, or the Atras, Feath and Atra Autopilots, oh my goodness. You're right, that is a, <laughs> that is a busted name. Uh, Autopilot Yellow going to fire back on 104th Battalion. We get hit crit. Do we see a straight exchange of damage? Sarah's Green's coming in, no evades. A straight exchange, two shields for two shields. Yeah, we absolutely do see a straight exchange of damage there, but 
Sarah's got more hit points. Right, as you mentioned as you were talking to her earlier, more hit points, more shields. Tom there, measuring for the hyena's arc, yep. nothing. Takes the lock with passive sensors. Because it's when that ship engages, it doesn't Correct. have to have a shot. Now, what we've got to watch out for here is um, this hyena bomber, because it's on the rock, it can rotate next turn. Right. It's got the lock here. So I don't think he will rotate because uh, it's in a tough spot because because of where he is. If he rotates, as you can see, his arc's already going to be pointing out this way. Now, the question is, can Sarah get out of that? So a one bank here with a barrel roll might actually put her out of that. But the one bank with the barrel roll... Uh it, it, it's a close run thing. I, I think the hyena still rotates because if these ships come in, he still has a great shot. He'll pop passive sensors so he doesn't have to take that target lock. We have some flexibility with where it does go if he wants to. With those, they can also provide him yep. the calculate batteries. And that's what I think. I think these two here are going to stick together because what that's going to allow him to do is take passive sensors with uh, the back toy prototype to have the target lock and have this guy sitting here with a, with a focus, uh, right. with a calculate, sorry, just to allow him to modify his shot. Right. And even if this arc does take a diamond boron shot, I don't think that's too bad because if you see, Sarah's done a really good job of spreading the rest of her ships out. I think Obi-Wan's going to come in hard here, and I think these guys are going to come in with, uh, with the bank maneuvers. I think Sarah's going to be aggressive this round. I think she's going to make big plays for these droids. She yep. knows she's got the guns on the board. She knows she's got the hull and the shields to so tank a couple hits on those beefy Republic ships. So I think she will choose violence, come right into the droids. Yeah, yeah, uh, and and she's done the right thing, going for this uh, this droid here that's carrying the tactical relay. Right. Um, it, it's just as squishy as this uh, as, the, as the bomber, so she's trying to kind of look at what what her targets of choice need right. to be. Uh, because honestly, two drones on their own aren't scary at all. Right. Especially not if Obi Wan Kenobi is your end game ship, and that's why he's out here to the flank. Yeah. Yep. Now, that is an Obi-Wan Kenobi that doesn't have regen, which is quite unusual to, uh, to, to see with the Jedi. Right. Now, Sarah actually commenting to me beforehand that she's this is the choice that she's made because she could go with regen calibrated laser targeting yep. over Delta 7B. Delta 7B, though, in this case, just reinforcing the beef of that list. The theme of the list is just the, the hull, the shields to chew through, the amount of damage it throws out. So what you're saying there is she's choosing something that's got a higher damage output. That, exactly. That's, that's, rather than something that's more defensive. Exactly. So I what think she's she, saying is she's, she's choosing, choosing violence. violence. <laughs> exactly. Mad respect for Sarah Tessum right there. Double checking what she the droids can do. Definitely think this will see rotates from those two rocked droids. Yeah. Number pink there in an interesting position. If he does expect Sarah to be aggressive, we could definitely see maybe a four straight barrel roll over block off that lane. I mean Number pink's an anomaly for me. Like, uh, I, I don't know where you put him. Like, I, I honestly don't. Like, a two bank this way keeps Obi-Wan honest, but one droid versus Obi-Wan isn't going to do much. There's no right. Discord. There's no shell cases. Do you Come, two straight barrel roll? Coming this way, again, you've got a torrent and a Y-wing. Again, they're going to be able to take that droid out on his own. I think you've got to keep him close. Now, he can't land on this rock because you can only have two droids per rock. So that one is currently full. This town's only big enough for the two of us. Absolutely there, Acer. Um, so we're probably going to see, honestly, I'd think of it maybe a hard three. Threatens these ships here. And I think what Tom might want to do is try and take this flank and work his way around. With these droids on the rock acting as the pivot to that wheel. Yep. All right, here comes Tom, number pink, leading the charge. It's just just two. the two straight. Yep. Still a fair maneuver. It's very non-committal. Yep. I think Calculate might keep him in range of this guy. Yep. He's actually going to link that to the barrel roll. Going out. Interesting. Playing for Obi-Wan Kenobi. And if Obi-Wan does not pop that droid, it does offer a very great, a very uh, aggressive two-turn in towards the center next round. Yep. Get flanking shots. So Sarah just holding the obstacle and the, uh, the bomber down while uh, Tom performs his rotate. And we'll see the same thing from the bomber. There it is, bomber rotating as well. <laughs> I 
and probably a passive sensors. There it is. Almost always a passive sensors. Well, the problem is because you don't get the action until you engage. Right. It is sometimes a little bit tricky because if, for example, he doesn't want to take the target lock and wants to calculate, he won't get that calculate until later on. And that's a calculate he can't spend. Right. It's calculate he can't spend on defense. But he can spend purples. He can spend purples. All right. So here's the three bank boost forward playing for a block. Yep. Absolutely. Moving into block that, uh, that arc there that's uh, stressed. Linking it to a calculate. That's strain token, yep. but he's just treating it as a stress. Yeah, there are no strain mechanics in these lists, so I think we'll see a barrel roll here, probably linked to a calculate. Considering which direction there, Tom is. It's, it's going to barrel roll this way. It's it's close to this rock. And the problem is, if the uh, barrel roll fails, he can't link it to the calculate. I think he's got can it. Can he though. barrel roll right, though? I don't think he can barrel roll this way because of where this one is. You know, I mean, again, that's a that's a close run thing. I, I think I think he might be able to make it if he thinks that he can. I think that's the better choice. Mm. So, so he's, he's declaring the barrel roll. roll. He's going left, yep. not chancing the right hand roll. All right, we have Captain Sear coming in two turn. Coming in along the left side of that rock, lending his arc to the fight. Captain Sear going to look like he's declaring the barrel roll as well. Maybe electing not to roll, not sure. I think you just take a focus here. Yeah. Now that barrel, the, the barrel roll to the left though, that does threaten Obi-Wan. Uh, I think he's debating the boost. Just moving those tokens out of the way so he gets a clear view. Right. I think if you, if you boost one straight. Nope, bang boost. It does open him up a little bit more to go right or left, boosting in front of that rock. And he's linking it to the focus. The only ship in this list that can take the focus is gonna take it right now. Mm -hmm. Arc 170 right now. Going right with the Arc 170. Is that going to clip the rock? I think it's going to clip the rock. So that's going to be damage from the rock potentially and th remain stressed. So they're really, taking yeah. a Hail Mary move right there. Got to get at, out. That's a really, really tough spot for that arc. Right. So rock damage rolling takes nothing. Sarah's lucky right there. Probably has a shot on Seer, though. That arc 170 had a lot of arcs pointed at it. Two bank coming in from the gold pink. Probably just see a focus here. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think the uh, the gold squadron is the, uh, the shot of choice. Although Sarah may want to just evade. Again, this is where I think she just pops a diamond boron missile, doesn't spend the second charge. There's another two bank from the other gold. Sarah is collapsing this formation down this lane right here. Got a barrel roll because I think she wants the uh, wants the clear broadside. She wants broadside in there. Probably don't see a linked action there. It's right in front of that gas cloud too. She is taking the evade.
Thank you very much, Dion. We are here, 48 minutes left in this round. Tom Trask on your left, Sarah Tessim on your right. Broadside now moving in with a three straight forward. We saw the ARC 170 last turn plinking two shields off the feet and outlaw yellow, but now coming in, uh, Tom Trask throwing great blocks, forcing the ARC 170 to take a less than optimal move there. Now in the firing line of Tom Trask's ships, Obi-Wan Kenobi turning down the side here. We have number pink, isolated slightly out to the left-hand side there, but I don't think that that's really much of a problem right now. Do you, Darren? No, I mean, th this drone here is probably not going to cause much of a problem for Obi-Wan. Right. It's just out there, just to just trying to tr kind of corral Sarah's list. So next turn, you can uh, turn in this way. Very interesting as we go into this first main round of combat. We did have some shield exchange last round, but nothing really major here. This is the turn, right? We always have that turn yep. in the games. Absolutely, and uh, so Sarah just looking for a damage update and uh, trying to understand what she's going to take a target lock on with her. Yep, so we're going to fire. She's going to see, see Obi -Wan. She's on this guy here. Right, because that's the one that she wants to take out. Oh, big bump. Broadside goes down, replacing him as best she can. It looks to me there before Broadside fell over, that uh, the Arc 17 or the V19 tour just a hair over there, and Arc or Broadside definitely did have Arc yep, both on there, but down the line. Both players just discussing it. Right. Hey, games at this level, mistakes happen. Right. Everybody's got a little bit nervous. This is the second yep. round, the top 64. Again, one of these players goes home, one of these players moves on to top 32 with their shot at the world championship. I mean, let's be honest, there are 11 ships on the board. Right. Something's going to happen. Something's going to bomb. Measuring range for Obi-Wan. And they're not exactly uh, subtle in their uh, dimensions either. The Y-Wing's a big model. <laughs> right. Those <laughs> torrents have got wings. Those arcs have got wings. Mm -hmm. So taking it in, taking a lock into... Yep. Into the tactical relay droid. So Very range three shot from Obi-Wan here. It's going to be phenomenal. Spencer Lock. Uh, just two hits. So three dice coming back from that. Uh, so takes two. Just takes one. We had the evade. Oh, sorry. Yep. Just takes one, but that is now half points. That is half points, and it's uh, it's close to death. In striking distance now, the rest of Sarah's ships. Here comes broadside. So checking to see whether Broadside's got range with the Ion Cannon. From my angle, that looks like it is. Range 2 in Ion. So she either got a, a primary shot or the uh, the Ion. I think you take primary here. I don't know. I think you take the Ion. He's only one damage away from death, or two damage from death. You can plink that through with the, uh, with the Gold Squadron. I mean, it's the more consistent... Um, and if she then doesn't kill it, that'll basically bump there. Right. So here comes the ion turret. Yep. Range two coming in, can change that one to a focus, spend the focus token. We've got one paint, so one damage, yep. no ion. But again, the more consistent shot right there from Sarah, making the right choice, I believe. Yep, so Gold squadrons and the ARC-170 are next. Yeah, so no, we're going to have to see her first. Because Sarah is first player. Oh, sorry, Tom is first player. So Sia, uh, Sia bringing the pilot skill too, shoots first. Sounds like he's firing into the V-19 torrent through uh, the gas cloud. No, he's oh, no, there's the that range one. Wow. No uh, results. Just spending the focus to get one. Uh, one evade, evade hot green. Now, I think if these torrents can kill this, I think that's a great swing. Because if that right. ship stays on the board, that's another four dice that's going to go into that torrent, uh, into that arc. So firing range one out the front from the arc yep. onto Captain, Captain Seer. Seer. Hit, hit, crit. That's going to be two shields there from on Captain Seer. Now, Captain. it's important to note, Captain Seer does have Solus 1. Right. So a little bit more health than the uh, the other autopilots. 
Yep, so Seer is not the one with the tactical relay upgrade. Soulless one is on Seer. Yep. Now so we have just asking Tom to uh, to show his cards just so that she's got a clearer view and right. uh, to visually look at it across the board. Get a seerer view. That was bad. That, All that, right, V19 Torian. That was bad, Asa. I do. <laughs> so it looks like range three from the torrent into the uh, autopilot drone with the relay. Nothing. Still had no results. It looks like we're going to have a range two obstructed. There one we go, hit. one hit. Any paint will do it. And there it is, has to spend the focus. Yep. Uh, calculate. Now Tom just has to has to hope that he doesn't need that calculate on offense now. Autopilot orange. So important to note, if the Diamond Boron missiles are used here against the Ark, that's the only ship that's going to roll uh, other than the Y-Wing. And I think that's why if he does use Diamond Boron missiles, he doesn't pop that second charge. Just take the three die shot. Orange checking Arcs right there, holding everything down. Has Arcs on everything except for the Ark, although it's really, really close, so they're calling a judge. Yeah, so they're calling a judge to do an Ark check. Absolutely the right thing to do. Judge Jeff Paul Miller coming in. Sarah holding everything down to make sure nothing else moves. Coming in with a clear range ruler. Looks, Looks out to me. Off. Jeff calling it out. So going into, into the Y wing. Range two. Good second choice. Broadside is a pain. Just one crit with plated hull now that'll turn into a hit. Y wing's got a hot evade. No damage. I believe we see, saw Sarah roll some incredible raids on uh, day 1A. I think we did too. Range 1. Oh, oh no. Wish he had that calculate. No damage. I mean, even with the calculate, it would have been one hit. I mean, one is one, right? <laughs> Shields down. Now here comes two. There is nothing from Droid Purple. Uh, there's passive sensors. He's going to spend that for the Calculate. Spending a charge on the Diamond Boron missiles come in. Yep. Just three dice. So the landing struts do declare that the shots are not obstructed by the obstacle. So yeah, Sarah just checking with the judge there. That, um. It says you ignore obstacles at range zero, yep. so that does mean you ignore the obstruction when they, of the obstacle. So here come the three red dice from the Diamond Boron missiles. Spend that target lock, one hit, two blanks. Rerolling and spend the calculate, two hits. All right, no evades, taking two. Yep. Now, note that uh, he spent the calculate from this droid because what it meant is he could have crack shotted if Sarah had rolled an evade there. Right. So he's going to spend a charge. So the, yes, the gold squadron and the Y wing both going to roll. All right, gold squadron Takes running force, taking a crit. Panicked. That is one very stressed arc, 170. And one hit. I think that was a charge well spent. Right. 
I mean, two damage off of a charge, that works. So effectively what we've seen there is that's that's four damage that's been dealt, dealt from that right. missile there. Three to the original ship, one to another. Great missile. Then we have number pink looking for a shot there. Firing range two into Obi-Wan. So two hits into Obi-Wan. Right. And we see one evade, one force spent. I mean, it was free, right? Absolutely. And yeah. we go back to dials. 37 minutes left in this round. Sarah and Tom are both tied right now. The half points on the ARC-170 plus the half points on the Feath and Outthraw autopilot are tying this game up. Yeah, absolutely. So after that engagement there, Acer, what, do you, what are your thoughts? You know, it's, it, it's tough to say. and I don't think that was very conclusive. Um, both of these players definitely still have an, uh, you know, definitely still have an in in this game, for lack of a better word. Um, both of them have a chance at bringing this through the mid-game into the end. So who do you think has the best position here? Because I think that's really what's going to decide it, rather than the damage race. So it's an interesting one. Sarah's got all of her ships here. Now, this arc is in a tough spot. He's not going to get an action anyway, so even right. if Sarah does block his maneuver, it's it's no great loss. What she's got to make sure that she does is clears enough space for Broadside to get in. Because right. Broadside wants that focus. And I think Broadside is just going to go ahead and take a one straight forward, maybe a two if he needs to clear some space for this V19 right there. Uh, I, I'm wondering if the ARC-170 just kind of moves out there, brings the rear arc to bear, or assumes he's going to get blocked, take a one bank. Mm. I think we're going to see a lot of bumps in this turn. Because right. This guy, he wants to clear his stress. He needs to either do a two straight, a three straight, or a two bank. Pretty much all of those hit this chip here. Unless disengages. And I don't think we're going to see Tom disengage. He's playing aggressive. He knows that the, I mean, nobody's really ahead in a damage race right now. Yep. But the B for the Rebel list means that he can fall behind very, very quickly, not have enough guns on the board to yep. take things out. Especially considering all of Sarah's ships are firing before the majority of his right. list. And I, I, I think that if, if Sarah can get even just one gun on target to TA-175 right there, we can see that go down. That's a three-die attack lost, one of Tom's largest guns. I definitely see, we're, think we're going to see a, a railroad crossing right in here. <laughs> now, a lot of train tracks going down. Yeah. He does only have one charge left on those diamond boron, so... It'll be interesting to see what happens. I, I'm guessing these aren't going to move. I'm guessing they're just going to stay where they are, stay facing that way. Uh, yeah, there's no reason for them to move right now. They're still in a really good position. Arcs wide, pointing towards the yeah. center. It, it's highly unlikely that Sarah will be able to remove this uh, bomber in the next turn. So I think we're going to see Diamond Boron again. I think we'll just see uh, what target uh, Sarah presents. Right. Because if if Tom can hit one of the uh, one of the uh, V19 torrents, uh -huh. what that means is all the other ships uh, in uh, Sarah's list will be uh, will be rolling for that damage. Not necessarily but because he'll have to reload that first. He does not have the second charge to spend. Very good point there, Acer. The uh, the other thing to be, bear in mind is it's every ship. So right. had these been uh, agility one, <laughs> they'd have also had to roll. And that, I mean, that was a good move from Tom there, just firing at the lower agility ship. Rather than going for the splash damage, firing on the gold. All right, here we got dials coming up. There's the bump to bank. To bank, does the bump, keeps his arc relevant. Yep. Doing just as you were saying, Darren, wheeling that formation in this direction, pinning them into the corner onto that side of the board. Great positioning from Tom. Sarah, though, just does have the gun. She has the haul. She might be able to withstand this engagement. Three straight. No. Is that going to clear the arc? That should clear the arc. And that's a great maneuver because it's going to gum up broadside. It's going to make that one haul Feath and Atra a thorn in Sarah's side. Now, we've seen that Sarah's not afraid to take some uh, unconventional moves. We saw uh, the previous turn, the arc 170 turn in this way. Uh, that's why it's still stressed. Um, then it took the panic pilot, but uh, we saw it. I mean, the conventional thinking was to just come this way and clear that stress. That is actually a bump. <coughs> so that, that could be crucial for Tom missing that block. Yeah. 
Well, not only does it miss the block, it also means that there's no action. Right. So a tokenless one-hull autopilot yep. is an easy target for any of Sarah's ships. So they're just going to slide that in now. All right, more droids coming in. Gonna bump some cool looking wooden templates on Tom's side, by the way. Pile of stress, just going ahead and moving number pink in there to block a disengage, block the two straight, keep guns on. Yeah, it's highly likely that we see the, uh, the arc disappear this round. However, now he's bank? going for the barrel roll. Yeah, I think that blocks a three bank. Will he link that to the calculate? I mean, it's a, don't there see it why is. You wouldn't. You've got the hard two in next turn. All right, so he's just going to stay put. Pat, Captain, passive sensors. Looks like taking the two straight. He's coming off the rock. Yeah. So this is the problem now. He's. Uh, I think because he wasn't expecting this guy to be here, he's now caused him to uh, to go forwards and bump. Right. I think that's a bit of a misplay there by Tom. Should have dialed in a four. Captain Sear taking the two bank. That's why he barrel rolled, because he was blocking Sear. Right. Now, will Seer bump into that arc as well? No, I think Seer's good. Seer is clear. Yeah, I think we're going to see uh, just a focus there by Seer. So, Seer going to start with the arc, just to try and see if she can get that out of the way. Just the one straight. I don't believe that'll fit. That should just bump. But they're putting the template in now. Bumping straight into Seer. Bump City says, Sarah, here we go. There's all the Republic ships coming in. 30 minutes remain in round two of X Wing. So just getting the call there, there's just just over half an hour left in uh, in this round. So there comes the bump from or, or from number pink. So number pink's gonna slide straight into the arc. Fortunately, gives him a range one shot into this guy. Right. Also gives him a shot into purple. It if does. somebody else plinks the uh, plinks yellow yep. right there, plinks the autopilot. Two straight and bump from the Torrents as well. And Ooh. now if we assume Broadside going to bump into that, into green, if we look at that, we see this huge bump train there, just about everybody not completing their maneuver. Just an entire mass of ships in this area just right. really gummed up. I mean, so, let's be honest, there's what, 11 ships on the board? Right, but I mean, my, my, my thinking here is if Obi, so Obi-Wan, Pink, uh, a Bactoid and Seer are four, the only four ships that got actions this round, that, that got to do what they came in to do. Who has the advantage after this block? No, five straight there from Obi-Wan, just a, a bit of a disengage. I would be, I think we're going to do a, uh, a boost and then a target lock on this guy. Right. Who do you think has the advantage here after this, this bump train? Because Sarah, you know, I mean, Tom did get a lot of like a lot of uh, of actions compared to what Sarah got, but Sarah still has a lot of shots in what counts. I think Sarah's got the advantage in this positioning because Obi-Wan's got an uncontested shot here. Here comes Obi-Wan into the back to a prototype. Judge call coming in to check the arc and range. Uh, what they're looking for is, does this get obstructed? holding down both the obstacle and the hyena bar. 
So what you can see here is while they're looking at that arc call, this arc has a shot on number pink. Right. This torrent has arc on the yellow uh, tactical relay. This guy has arc on the yellow guy and on the purple guy. Broadside also has arc on yellow. I think Broadside takes that first shot on yellow. But before that, here comes Obi-Wan Kenobi's uncontested shot. Crit, spend the lock. Was he spending the force for hitting a crit? Two green we'll dice there, both so of them not going obstructed. through. So that is a hit crit into the Bactoid. A fuel Fuel leak. leak. Thank you for putting those in the box. Easy to see. So broadside being uh, PS3. Firing before the rest. Yep. Checking range there, range two out the side to the feature and outlaw autopilot yellow. So she's deciding now whether she wants to take the range one shot on Seer or to uh, try and rely on the uh, the torrents to uh, take this out. Because that is something that is that is worth mentioning. Green here does not have a shot on T Seer. Yeah. But nobody is focused, so I think she's got to take the shot while she can. If she gets bad dice, then she could end up with a one hull auto one hull autopilot still on the board. I don't think she can take the risk. Yeah. There's the ion cannon turret into the autopilot. An extra die. There's hit, crit, that, crit. That's, that's it. That's a good autopilot. That'll Whoa. do it. One damage. He did get the natty <laughs> evade, so she needed that single damage to go through to pull the TA-175 yep. off. Absolutely. Taking 20 more points on the board. 41 to 21. Sarah with a lead. Uh, so that triggers on death, though, TA-175. Okay, just pull up TA-175 for me. As after friendly ship with each calculator is destroyed, uh, there must be a ruling somewhere showing that that is, includes that ship. Okay. All right, so three hits, one evade, nothing goes through. So we have two shields and a crit off a of broadside. Uh, card. So now two's there. So we're going to go ahead and fire. I think the 104th fires first onto number pink. See what we can do with that shot. Then that can inform what the rest of them go. So she's uh, going to judge. She's going to ask for the judge fire first with number pink. So rules question here, Sarah asking, can she check for obstruction before declaring it as a target? What do you think the answer is there, Darren? So uh, they have to, the judge is saying that they've got to pick the target before checking whether it's okay. obstructed or not. She can measure range. She can measure arc. Yeah. So she's going to range, measure range one into uh, the purple drone. Two, Two hits. hits. One of eight. Does he spend that calculate? I don't think you do. You can just take one. Get put some more damage in. Spending it. He is not choosing violence. No damage into purple. Arc oh. one seventy into pink. Uh, three hits there from the arc. This could be a dead drone. Nope. Uh, one damage goes in after spending a calculate. That's a fair spend of that calculate. Don't give up half points. So he he got he had the calculate before, right? Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he was one of the few that got an action this round. Yeah. And it's a calculate. Uh, it's a calculate. Uh, a token, not uh, 
a calculate action. Right. So the judge just clarifying there that you check for obstruction before you deter, um, after you've uh, right. chosen your target and rolled, you then uh, determine whether it's obstructed to decide how many defense dice you so roll. So V19 green is firing one result into pink, trying to get him to spend that calculate. He's going to take it. And that is half points on uh, Trade Federation drone pink. Sarah now leading by nine points. But we've got a few shots coming into the arc 170. Yeah, pink range one. Retaining that calculate. And needs it to get at least one damage through. There's no hot evade one more into the 104th. Now has three left, an interesting opportunity for a diamond boron kill shot. So the uh, this autopilot drone here going range one into uh, broadside. Now it's, this could be a dead broadside. Well, there's three hits. And nothing, three go through. All right, so Hyena Bomber right there taking the target lock on the Y-Wing with passive sensors. Firing the last Diamond Boron charge. Well, it could kill Broadside here. Taking the target lock. That's a dead Broadside. To its the crit, definitely a dead Broadside. Happens to be a fuel leak. <laughs> Range one from purple into the 104th. <coughs> Could be enough to take the arc off if he gets good uh, red dice here. And there's pretty good red dice network calculations spending the hyenas. The Two evades. damage. So that arc staying around on one. Will get another turn to shoot. Right, so now Tom Traz up. 62 to 51, an 11 point lead with 20 minutes left in this round. We only have a couple more rounds left in this game. Players playing very methodically right now. Yep. Who's got the advantage right now? Who do you think can pull this out? So, there's a few things to take into account here. So, this Trade Federation drone here is remaining on one hull. This arc is remaining on one hull. That's quite a, uh, an easy bit of damage to plink away. Right. This is worth a lot more. Right. Um, could extend Tom's lead. However, Sarah's got Obi-Wan. She needs to get Obi-Wan in and doing some damage. Oh. So Ace is just going to go check the damage that the uh, the back toy prototype took there. We think it was a hit and a crit. Uh, we're just going to update the overlay, so uh, he's just going to go check. Um, now, there's some important things that need to happen here. Sarah needs to start taking some of these ships off the board um, if she's got if she wants to come back in this. She's only behind by 11 points, but that's that's could be enough to uh, see Tom uh, Tom win this game. So we got that error corrected there. Three hull remaining on the back toy prototype, putting it within striking distance of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Yeah, so if that back toy prototype decides to stay there, it's, it's pretty much a sitting duck for Obi-Wan. Now, the challenge is, if he wants to come off that rock, he has to do a two forwards. So Sarah's really got to decide, what is this ship doing? I don't think she needs to, to, to call it too hard because Obi-Wan Kenobi has the one hard turn. He absolutely does, but number pink here could come in and do a hard two and block that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> these are mind games, right, Darren? We've got yeah, the opportunity yeah. for both players to make plays for each of the pieces that could go down right yeah. here. Now, I think we just see a, 
three signals loop here and a three signals loop here to bring these two uh, bellabobs uh, back around and right. keep their arcs relevant out this way. And those are two three dice attacks. Yep. Those are the ones that Tom wants to keep pointed yep. in the right direction. Tom needs to just press his advantage, keep throwing red dice downfield. Seventeen minutes left in this game. Sarah Tessum trailing by eleven points. Methodically placing down dials just to make sure that we get everything right. So does Obi Wan Kenobi then hard commit around this rock? I think Obi Wan's gotta be conservative here. So he's doing it too hard with the uh, the out or pilot. So the autopilot. Interesting. I think he's he, he's just trying to keep it because he knows he's not going to get actions either way. That's another good way to move the arc around, mm -hmm. and it keeps him closer, keeps him a little bit more relevant, gives uh, Sarah less opportunity to run away from it. Yeah. So they're calling oh. a judge because it's really tight as to whether it clears that back corner of the uh, the uh, the pink torrent there. Right. Just using the judge to check that. Have to make sure that we have the right choice there. Yeah, it's, it, it, and, and this is an important call because it, it makes the difference between whether that ship's going to have a shot this turn or not. Right. Like if it bumps on this corner and it's facing this way, not relevant. Right. If it clears and fits in here, then it's, it's going to get three dice downfield. Attention, Star Wars. They're train tracking that out. Looks like Judge might be calling that in. Just having a look at it now. Now remember, the angle of this, um, we don't have the same angle the Judge has. Right. So it might be that it, that little dash there at the front of the ship might not necessarily line up from the angle that we're looking at, but that's why it's important to get that Judge right. eye view. Judge there's so being exceptionally yeah. accurate. Judge saying it's not going to fit. Not going to fit. So tracking that back yep. behind the V19. And then removing all of those templates one more time. Yeah. What did I say? Rail yard? <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> So they're saying that's the best that they can get. So now they need to uh, take those templates out. And as you see there, Acer, that, that means that this guy's arc's pointing this way. Right. It's not going to be relevant this round. Thank you, Dion. Oh. We're back on table one right here. Sarah Tessum has blocked the orange featuring outlaw autopilot, not able to move its arc around. Did a risky two turn. Now we have. What looks like a say talon roll right there. There it is. It was just a two turn. So the talon roll uh, is an interesting turn there. Is it a talon roll or is it a turn? Uh, okay, so that is a talon roll. So he's going side to side. If he wants to go exactly to the center, then that's still yep. fine. Yeah, yeah, and it looks like that's exactly where he wants to go. Opens the struts. Yep, opens that struts, facing down. Didn't think of that maneuver, but it's very solid. Yep, yep, absolutely. So now he's just repositioning whether he wants to go slightly forward, yep. slightly further back. 
again, it's still a valid way to do that. A couple yep. extra steps involved, yeah. but it does it but, does mean they don't have to mark yep. all of that nonsense for like a fourth yep. time this round. All probably very relieved. Both both players happy with that. They they know that there's yep. time on the clock and ticking down. This could swing either way. Here comes number pink, not taking the two turn to block, but going onto the rock right there. Still could barrel roll off it though after he opens up those struts. Well, that that drone should be stressed, and that move isn't blue. You're absolutely right there, Darren. Let's go ahead judge. and yes. So it looks like they've just caught that. So yeah, they've, they've just caught that, so they're uh, going to barrel him back. So as we were bringing the judge over, players caught that themselves. Yeah. Easy to miss. These stacks of tokens on the table. Yeah, so that, that drone stays stressed. No calculate. But does open up the landing struts yeah. still. And the uh, the back toy prototype there is doing the... Uh, just pivoting. Just pivoting. Now, I think the, uh, the, the misplay there by Tom is, is going to be interesting because that stops Obi-Wan being blocked. Right, and stops Obi-Wan being blocked, and he is rolling yep. the Bactoid prototype. So he completely ignores the rock with the struts, so he yep. can barrel roll. It's, it's not really a barrel roll at this point, it's a walk. <laughs> it's a <laughs> leisurely stroll. Scuttling his way across. Exactly. <laughs> it does, however, mean that none of these ships here have calculated. Right. And he did just, that is a stress token in the, this context, not the strain. He stressed to link that to a target lock on the on the 104th Battalion. Yep. There's the Segnor's loop from Captain Seer. Yep. Interesting that he's taken the, uh, the target lock there, the linked action, because he's not got any missiles left. Now, I guess it's, it's, it's another modification. Right. I think he's putting in the target lock, so he has a modification right now. Odds are about the same, right? If he doesn't have to use it, yeah. then he's got something to, to modify his shot with later. Yeah, so there we see the arc trying to disengage. Stays double stressed. Was never going to get an action anyway, so... It just means that she's going to get those torrents in there right. and get actions with them. There comes the V19 pink, one straight forward. I think we might see a barrel roll this way followed by an evade. I think so too. Or maybe just the focus. I mean, I, I, either way is good. I actually think the focus is a better idea because you got the range one shot right there. Only taking an arc from Captain Seer in the back forward right now. Roll would see it into the arc of purple. Just depends what Green's doing. So he, she is going to roll. Yep, and I think that fits. Absolutely perfect there. She's going to link that to the evade. There it is. <coughs> also one forward from green. Probably just see a focus from this one. Yep. Both those torrents untouched. And look at that there. Orange, uh, orange autopilot not having a shot at all. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's why I say it's, it's it's crucial, and that's why I'd have gone for the uh, the three sloop there. There's the one bank from Obi Wan. Unfortunate for Tom, he forgets about that blue or that white two bank. Yeah. Unable to block Obi Wan. That absolutely would have been a block. I think we're going to see a target lock on this right. Way. There we go. And as I say. No calculates on any of these ships here. That's Steve. right. Absolutely no mods. Thank you for tossing it back to us. The only eight minutes left, and this game is getting close. Tom Traz up by 64, but definitely down in this engagement. Lock was absolutely the right call there. Spent Taking that force. Dumping that force. Force and force. Damn the torpedoes, says Sarah. We have two dice from the Bactoid prototype. 
Three obstructed through the rocks. Blanks, blanks, blanks. No calculates to spend. Yep. Bactoid prototype goes down. <laughs> and the crit is the fuel leak. Uh, so the, the, oh, the, the, the crit, crit goes off. Fuel, fuel leak. leak goes off. Bactoid comes off, and now we have Sarah's ships poised to put more shots in. She's picked up a lead, 89 to 62. Yep. So what we've got now is we've got this turn on this guy, this turn on this guy, and the arc just takes some downfield shots. Range three obstructed. First of all, we've got Sia, though. Right. Well, that's the shot from Sear. He has to try to plank that one damage through. Captain Sear, two hits. One, no second, no blanks to change with the gas cloud. So the 104th also goes down, picking up 20 more points. Not quite enough to put Tom back into the lead, though. Needs six more. But still gets to shoot. Right. Range one from pink. 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 Yep. Pink fight. Blanks on blanks. And there's the focus for three that's hits. A that's dead a droid. dead pink. Very dead pink. Arc 170 coming in next. I think he just, I, I feel like he might just want, or she might just want to take the plink shot on the purple right there. Try to, you know, a, a lucky shot could yeah. be half points. Yeah. yeah. The opportunity to pick up more points than shooting at that. She's taking the shot, one hit, no damage done on any of these. Two yeah. evades means nothing. So now the arc goes. So now the drones have a chance to shot, or shall I say drone. There is only one more Federation drone, and that is black, or excuse me, purple right there. Range one onto pink. One crit. She has the evade. And she does. She, she dodges the evade anyway. token, so. Yep. So six minutes left in this game. Right. I think this might be last round. Maybe right. see one more. And Sarah's pulled out a very solid lead. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, in terms of points, it's not huge. It's 99 to 83, but Obi-Wan is full. Yeah. We've seen a significant number of ships change, uh, taken off the board that round. Right. With, uh, with three ships uh, in total coming off that round. Right, but Tom Traz still has the opportunity to pull this back. Taking these down to half or killing them could mean the difference. And these 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 two Bellabobs, Bellabobs, Belly Rubs, whatever they are, there's two Bellabobs in prime position to chase. Yep, yep. So his biggest guns are still here. He's got two of them still on the board. Obi-Wan at this point can't disengage. He's got to try and stay right. relevant. Um, so I think we're probably going to see a Talon roll from this guy and probably just a one bank in from here. But his gun's not going to be relevant. And that's the thing that Sarah's got to watch out for. I think we're probably going to see a one bank, one bank from Obi-Wan. I, I think I think it'll be a two, three straight boost. It just depends on that rock. Yep. If he thinks he can clear that. So there's the one bank. So no, just uh, just clearing out the way, uh, doing the two straight. Is he going from rock to rock there? He might be doing a rock hop. Uh, doesn't quite look like he gets that. Uh, Sarah, though, saying she saw the rock move, so even though it got bumped out of the way, it looks like they're going to call that rock hopping. Okay. Uh. X-Wing countdown players, round two pairings will be coming up shortly. So rock hopping, he's going to lose the stress. Landing strut still open right there, barely on that rock. Paul Stryker, 359 here in the chat, pointing out Sarah's going to be mentally exhausted tomorrow, but she got here from LCQ. Yep. Right? She came here from last chance. Congratulations to Sarah making it this far. Yeah. It's, 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 we, we did discuss this on the first day, whether we were going to see anyone from last chance qualifier making it into Worlds. And right. like, this is what happened. Like, this is a phenomenal story. We all love a feel-good story. Absolutely. Someone coming in through the LCQ, <laughs> making it 64. Can she go the distance? From well, the games that I've seen her play, she is a phenomenal player. Absolutely. One hard turn from autopilot orange. 
I am also seeing Tom also from LCQ. Wow. Both of these players doing really, really well. Two straight forward from Red from Captain Sear. The only ship that can focus on Paul Tom's side is doing so. There's a two torrent, there's a torrent and one bank. Yep. So clears the stress, probably takes the evade, maybe even a barrel roll. That's the only way she can get it. She has to link it yep. from the barrel roll. But I think she still has to take that chance because that, like, that's the prime target for Tom right now to bring it back in. He's got to get the half points on pink. Well, even got with two half, arcs on it. Even if half points on one of these ships doesn't get him enough for the win, he needs the kill. So now just trying to figure out what uh, actions to take. This might be the last round. Right. There's the evade. So do we see the two talent roll? Just the two turns. Sarah's getting out of there. Reasonable choice. Just needs to preserve the point. She knows she's up. She knows the timer is coming down. I think we also see the evade, maybe the evade barrel roll. Well, if you barrel roll this way uh, and evade, you, uh, you effectively get out of range one of this guy. Mm -hmm. You might block Obi-Wan, though. It depends what Obi-Wan's done, and that's probably what Sarah's going to look at now. There's the barrel roll coming in. So, yep, there's the roll. It's going to be clear. And link it to the evade. Out of arc of this guy. Range two there. Obi-Wan indeed banking out. Yep. Good work, Obi-Wan, says Sarah. I mean, probably see a, a one-back boost. There's the force, one-back boost. boost. Not going to take any other actions. Well, no, that was her action. She oh, decided yes, yes, not yes. to use the force there, just to hold on to, to this. So, Captain Sia. Has got range three to green or range two into pink. And that's the better shot, it's taking the range two into pink. There's so two hits, spend focus, focus, spend it. Spend the evade, one damage. So we're going to see orange going in as well. Now he needs to do two more damage. Hitting a crit. So Sarah gets the evade. Yeah, so he's taking the one crit, panic pilot. But that is time, as will be time here very, very soon. Damage sensor array. Okay, damage sensor array. And that is time. No shots there. Now it looks like. What was that? They, they're in the planning phase. Okay. It sounded like it was time, but they are going to play one more round. I don't think so. I don't think Sarah knows that she's ahead. Yeah. I don't think so. You always have to be cognizant of those points. Yeah. She's ahead by three. Yeah. So our timer was a couple seconds ahead, and they set down that last dial before the timer, or that yep. first dial before so, the uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. before the timer ran out. So it, they are just checking points now. It's it's three points. Yep. So we have a chance for Tom to come back into the lead. Yep. I think Sarah just needs to scatter. Uh, I think she does. Uh, I, I think basically what's going to happen now is this guy's got to run. Right. But 
unfortunately, it doesn't then matter what these two do because all that Tom needs to do is just bring this ship in, bring this ship in, and bring this ship in. So the one advantage Sarah's got is this ship is moving after these guys. Can we just right. bring up the arc, uh, the uh, Torrance dial there? Right. Because does it have the three hard? It does not. But it's got the two. So it's got the two. So I think what we're going to see here is a two bank, a barrel roll out, and a cal and a uh, an evade. Uh, just we might see difference. that. I. I I might gamble on the two turn over this way because if he pivots, a barrel roll then gets him out of the arc. Potentially. Which would be a better play to deny all those shots. So I think this guy's going to do a three straight. Yep. I think Obi-Wan's going to have to come in this way and that way. And so Boos just try to get one more shot. Just maybe pick up half points on a lucky shot there. Yep. He could also, she could also get half points on Seer. The thing is, C is all the way over here. The only thing that's likely to get uh, C it is here, uh, and she needs to do two more damage. Right. This is such a. This is down to the wire. This like, really is down to the wire. <laughs> this, this could go either way. Right. Who do you think it's on? Oh, I mean that's that's a that's a tough call. Like, I mean, Sarah is definitely ahead right now, but all that Tom needs to do is plink two damage through. Yeah, yeah. I I think Sarah is in a real tough spot here. Right. Because of the amount of damage that this ship took last turn, because of Sears' ability to, uh, because of this ship's ability to uh, use that crack shot. Now, is that a bit of a misplay by Sarah? I think this high level, I'd have been checking that bullseye. Right. But. They've got a better view of the table. Might look different to her, yeah. Yep. Yep. So, it all comes down to what this ship does and what these ships do. I think these are irrelevant. So, we do have some questions in chat about those landing struts yep. uh, and that rock hop right there. Um, Emerald Big says, basically, when struts are open, the struts close after executing the maneuver. When struts are closed, they open while executing the maneuver. So, that's interesting. Because that would mean that he's, he, like Sarah would still ignore. He wouldn't have been able to hop. Right. He wouldn't, well, he would have been able to move onto the rock because yep. he's still ignoring them there. Yep. But would not have been able to roll. Right. No, he wouldn't have. Mm. Because at that point, the struts close. Would he then take the damage and certainly not able to roll? Uh, it, it's too late to dial that back. It's uh, right. Neither like neither players caught that. I, I, we might check with the judge afterwards. Um, thank you for bringing that. We'll we'll check with the judge to check the timing on that. But yeah, at, at, this, this, at point, this point, we are where we are. Right, we are where it's, it's. We we have a the roll over here. We'd have to walk back that entire round. Yeah, yeah. It, it you can't do it. Right. So, uh, I I think this is it. So we're probably going to see a hard one in with Obi and a right. boost. Whether, he, whether she gets a shot with Obi is going to be interesting. Such a close game. I think it's <laughs> yeah. probably the closest game we've seen. Yeah. <coughs> Seriously, love it. I mean, any damage, will, like any half points will decide it, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Torn is stressed. Nah, Dion can't leave. <laughs> so there's the pivot. Yeah. Yep. So that the, the the two turn then being a a good option. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, two turn calculate but um, evade barrel mm -hmm. this way is interesting. Because I because here yeah that would be beautiful because here go those those, those Belba labs aiming this way. If she two turns, that's a beautiful maneuver. Has Sarah seen it? I believe so. Yeah, Obi-Wan may be able to get an arc. If he hard ones here, boosts in, takes a target lock, and if he can get two hits on that droid. And Sears, and Sears taking the one turn, man, that two turn. Right, this is it. This, if, yeah. If Sarah's turned this way, it's hers. If now, now this Tom, way, I mean, Tom has overcommitted here, I think. Here's the boost. There we go. There's the arcs wide. That's what he needs to do. Yeah. 
link that to a focus. But I still, I still think the barrel roll. Four, four straight. straight. So, four straight barrel roll this way. Take the evade. Yep. No, it's oh. damage sensor array. Oh. Oh, has to focus. Forgot about that. That is. It's just you just got to pray, right? The problem is, that droid there has got crack shot. Yeah. Now, man, I would have liked to see a Talon roll there to just grab some arc. You're stressed. Oh, that's right, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the arc's stressed. It's got to get out There's of the way. There's the one turn. One We're going to see a boost and a target lock. If Sarah can get half points on this droid, then... Then it doesn't matter, right? Well, half points is, is, is 10. Oh, that's right. And then... That would be 12. And 12, so she wins by one. She wins by one point. <laughs> uh, they're going to call a judge. They, 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 have, to they judge. have to call a judge. So I believe we are joined here by Dion. We are joined by Dion Morales. Thank you. <laughs> I think this is the most tense I've seen Dion all week. And bear in mind, we are running three streams here. <laughs> right. So taking the target lock onto the... Okay. Not obstructed. <laughs> Not obstructed. Call on the judge. judge. There it is. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no. So, so we're wrong. We're, we're wrong a little bit because it's 13 points for half of the torrent. And Sarah would come up by 10. Oh, because yep. he's get tw is this 12 left. It's 12 because he's already gotten yep. the 13. Yep. Yep. So it's not going to be a final salvo. Oh, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Sarah one, be one, one point if she can get half of this. So she can get half on this drone, and the torrent dies. She has one force and a target lock. So this matters. If she gets, she needs three hits. Because what she needs to do, yeah, she needs this to be spent. Let's listen to the judge. It's obstructed. Obstructed. And that matters. Blanks still happen, though. Three yeah. blanks happen just as often as two blanks do. This is tense. This is. Hold me, Asa. There it is. Three, three hits. hits. That's what Sarah needs now. Oh. Two blanks, two hits that's come through. Points. That's half points. That's it. Sarah wins Sarah, by one. Yep, that's it. Sarah wins by one. That, that's game. Yeah. No, ma no matter what Tom does, even if he kills that, Sarah wins by one. I have literal goosebumps. <laughs> Feel my arm right now. He does. He has literal goosebumps. <laughs> it's because I held you. Good job. There we go. There's like, two. Range two from red from Captain Sear. So let's see what happens. Can he kill the prototype? Two hits. Focus for three. That's it. There's the. Yep. It's, it's taking at least one. Yep. Yeah, it's that. There it is. Leading by one point. <laughs> Congratulations Incredible. to Sarah Tessum. Will Oliver Hocknell please report to Tournament HQ? One point, one point. Sarah Tessum taking that by one point. She will move on to the top 32. So we've just had two games on stream, one by one point. Holy cow. This has been absolutely incredible. We will. Yo, I was going to say, we'll turn it back to you, Dion. We'll see you next round.